There's more chance of the sun not coming up tomorrow than there is of either of us writing an application that doesn't have any errors in it. That is why Blazor, just like any other web framework, needs decent error handling to prevent your application crashing and to give our users a decent experience. Out of the box, the default way that Blazor handles exceptions really sucks but that's very easy to fix. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the way you should be handling exceptions in your next Blazor application. Let's get started. So here we are in Visual Studio. I have a standard Blazor server web application here. I have the render mode set to interactive server. I've made a slight change to the counter page. So I've just taken out the guts and I've really put it into my own component called my counter. And the only thing I've, I've really changed here, it does the same thing. When you click the button, we increment the counter. But I've also added a second button here, a divide by zero. And all this does is it tries to divide the number 10 by zero. And the idea of this is so that we can simulate an exception. So the slightly modified component, I still have the count button that if I click this, uh, we are counter increments. If I click the divide by zero, the default behavior is that Blazor will show this yellow bar at the bottom with just a link that will force the page to be reloaded. What's important to know here is that the Blazor server maintains a persistent connection with the client. This is called the circuit. When you have an unhandled exception like this, that circuit is terminated. This is quite of a big deal because the user session is effectively ended. Any state your components have will be lost. We can see this effect by if I click any of these other buttons, I get absolutely no response from the application. I click anything here, the whole application is effectively dead. We now need to reload the page or refresh the browser to reestablish the connection with the server or fix the circuit. Now our application is responsive again, but we've lost any state that any of our components may have been holding. This is where we wanna be using the error boundary component. This is a feature that was introduced into .NET 6, and it allows us to isolate and handle exceptions relating to a specific component, and it prevents the whole application from crashing. You can think of this as a try-catch block, but specifically for UI components. So we can wrap our component in an error boundary component. There is two main sections to this. We have the child content, which is the thing you want to try and run. In the case of an unhandled exception, Blazor will render the errant content section of the component. Right, so now our counter, if we hit the divide by zero, we'll see we now get our application rendering the error content portion of that error boundary. The difference is this time at least our, the rest of our application is still responsive. The connection with the circuit is still maintained. We can make this better still by telling the component to recover from the unhandled exception that's just happened. So now in our code section, I can declare a error boundary variable, and then we can create a method where we recover from that, that error state that we're in. And we do that by just calling the recover method on the error boundary object. Then in our error boundary component, we'll need to make a reference to our variable. And in our error content section, we can give the user the option to try and recover by clicking a button. So now clicking our button, if we hit the divide by zero, we can see our error content is being displayed with the clear button. If we hit the clear button, it now recovers the page back where we were. This still looks a bit bad because it looks like we're losing state on the entire page. This is not actually the case. And we can show this by add a second counter, this time without the error boundary. Uh, right, so now we've got a second counter. This should at least illustrate it with this one having, so if we add some counts to both of these, we now cause the exception with where we have the error boundary. You'll see here something went wrong. The important thing is, well, we haven't lost any state in any of the other components on our page, so we can still continue counting and we can clear this and this goes back. So definitely much better behavior rather than the way it is without the error boundary. Once again, this now crashing the whole application and breaking everything. You do have access to the exception that occurred. That's all stored in the context object. And then here you've got access to the inner exception, the data, you can even display the full stack trace. Ideally, in a real world application, you wouldn't be showing that to the user, rather you would add some sort of logging here and then save that, um, and then rather just show a decent message to the user. We can set up a global exception handler to catch anything else that isn't already catered for with an error boundary. But before we go to that, I wanna speak about some of the caveats 
So should you just wrap every single one of your components in an error boundary? While this does sound like the safe thing to do, there are some of the considerations you might want to think of. First of all, adding all this error boundary code is going to bloat your code base. Are you happy with that? If so, then that's fine. Also, you may end up with a situation where if you have heavily nested components, you may end up with misleading error messages depending on where the exceptions happened. So you really want to try and be strategic with which components you end up wrapping with the error boundary and which ones you don't. A scenario that seems to work well is to group certain areas of your UI that make sense, group them together and put them inside a single error boundary. Right, so then moving on to how we want to handle global unhandled exceptions. What's fantastic is we can use the error boundary at a global level in our application. Similar to the way we've done our individual components, we can go to our main layout.razor and where our body gets rendered, we can wrap this inside a error boundary component. In our error content, we can just show some arbitrary mes message, but I mean, we could be now, ideally we would be using a logger to save the details. So now if we throw our divide by zero exception, it gets caught by our global error handler. Problem is, this is still breaking our application. As you can see, it's completely unresponsive. This time we're gonna do this without requiring a user to click a button. And we're gonna do that by calling the recover method in the on-parameter sets method. Control F5 to rebuild. So now if the application breaks, this still hasn't worked. This is because we are forgot to reference our error boundary, control F5. So then if we cause the exception, our error has occurred, it's been handled by the error boundary, but the beauty is it's already recovered. And what's important is our, our circuit or our connection with the server remains intact. So there are some caveats and some gotchas that you need to be aware of when using the error boundary component. Be careful with components that render outside of the standard component tree, anything like a pop-up window or a dialogue. These might be outside of the scope of the error boundary component to handle. And then the error boundary component only catches exceptions that happen during rendering or within the lifecycle methods. It does not catch exceptions from asynchronous operations that aren't awaited within one of the lifecycle methods. You still need to use a try catch block to deal with these. Then dealing with async await exception handling is a whole nother thing by itself. But luckily for you, I have a video just about that. So I suggest you watch this one next to make sure you're covered for any exceptions. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you over there.